The Four Marian Dogmas A dogma of the Catholic Church is defined as a truth revealed by God, which the magisterium of the Church declared as binding. Mary, Mother of God One of the Marian dogmas is Mary's divine motherhood, which was proclaimed at the Council of Ephesus in 431. Various names are used to describe Mary's role as mother of Jesus. She is called Mother of God, which translates the more accurately stated Greek term Theotokos, or birth giver of God. According to the Council, the Holy Virgin is the Mother of God since she begot according to the flesh, the Word of God made flesh. This decision was further explained by the Council of Chalcedon in 451. Mary's divine motherhood was not the object of an independent or exclusive dogmatic declaration. The statement is embedded in texts defining the person and natures of Jesus Christ. Thus, the dogma of divine motherhood becomes an integral part of the Christological dogma. Mary, the Mother of God, is an essential part of the teaching of the Catholic Church. She is hailed as preeminent and as a wholly unique member of the Church, and as its exemplar and outstanding model in faith and charity. The dogma of divine motherhood is generally accepted by all Christian denominations. Mary Ever Virgin The dogma about Mary's perpetual virginity maintains that Mary was ever a virgin before, during, and after the birth of Christ. The expression perpetual virginity, ever virgin, or simply Mary the Virgin, refers primarily to the conception and birth of Jesus. From the first formulations of faith, especially in baptismal formulas or professions of faith, the Church professed that Jesus Christ was conceived without human seed by the power of the Holy Spirit only. Vatican II reiterated the teaching about Mary, the Ever-Virgin, by stating that Christ's birth did not diminish Mary's virginal integrity, but sanctified it. The Catechism of the Catholic Church ponders the deeper meaning of the Virgin Bride and perpetual virginity. It is also maintains that Jesus Christ was Mary's only child. The so-called brothers and sisters are close relations. The Immaculate Conception of Mary The solemn definition of Mary's Immaculate Conception was proclaimed as an independent dogma by Pope Pius IX in his Apostolic Constitution, Ineffabilis Deus, on December 8, 1854. It stresses the dignity and holiness required to become Mother of God. The privilege of the Immaculate Conception is the source and basis for Mary's all holiness as Mother of God. The dogma of the Immaculate Conception states that 
the most blessed Virgin Mary from the first moment of her conception by a singular grace and privilege from Almighty God and in view of the merits of Jesus Christ was kept free of every stain of original sin. When the angel addresses Mary at the Annunciation, he does not address her by her name. Instead, he uses the title, Hail, full of grace, the Lord is with you. This describes Mary's true nature. Her person is full of grace. Mary's Assumption This dogma on the Assumption of Mary was proclaimed by Pope Pius XII on November 1, 1950 on his encyclical Monificentissimus Deus. The dogma states that Mary, Immaculate Mother of God, Ever Virgin, after finishing the course of her life on earth, was taken up in body and soul to heavenly glory. This definition as well as that of the Immaculate Conception makes not only reference to the universal, certain and firm consent of the Magisterium, but makes allusion to the concordant belief of the faithful. The Assumption had been a part of the Church's spiritual and doctrinal patrimony for centuries. It had been part of theological reflection, but also of the liturgy and was part of the sense of the faithful. This dogma has no direct basis in scripture. It was nonetheless declared divinely revealed, meaning that it is contained implicitly in the divine revelation. The assumption may be seen as a consequence of divine motherhood, being through, with, and for her son on earth, it would seem fitting for Mary to be through with and for her son in heaven too.